Welcome to My Little Paintbrush. I am Miss Sarah, and today we're gonna to be painting the zebra. I'm really excited about this one. This is one we've been looking forward to, right? Um, and all the artists that are painting with me today should have received an image like this with your kit. Um, this is gonna be your best friend today. So keep in mind that as we go here, you're going to be kind of referring to this a lot. Um, so have it somewhere where you can look at it, along with the picture that came with your kit. Okay. So as we are painting today, remember that Miss Sarah's rules still apply, even though we aren't in the studio painting together. Be kind to yourself and be patient. This is new territory for a lot of us, and you're going to be learning a lot of new things, which is why I'm excited to teach this, right? So. Let's have fun, let's learn together, and let's get started. You ready? So the first thing we need to do is take this image that you all received, and you're gonna cut it out. You wanna cut out this head of the zebra because we're gonna learn how to do an image transfer today. So I have my scissors here, and I'm gonna quickly cut out this head. And it doesn't have to be perfect, okay guys? You're just gonna quickly go around, the idea is to be able to lay it directly on top of the head that you already have on your canvas, okay? Because we already traced out the outline, right? We already have that, okay? So you just wanna make sure you cut along the very edge of your head here so you can place it directly on your canvas. So I'm gonna come over here to my canvas now so you can watch me do this. I'm just getting around the nose. It's not perfect, but it works. All right, so we have our image here. You can see I've already transferred mine to save time, but I'm gonna show you how to do yours. So now that I've cut this out, I can fit it directly on top of my outline. You see that? Now, if you have some transfer paper, you can pull out that transfer paper right now and it will make it a lot faster too. So there's two different ways to do it. You can use transfer paper and lay your transfer paper here on top of the head and then put this piece over the top of your transfer paper. I would suggest that you tape it down so it doesn't shift or move. And then you can trace along the lines and put your head in, okay? But you wanna make sure this doesn't move while you're tracing. If it shifts at all, you will end up with lines all over the place. So tape it down. Okay, if you don't have transfer paper, you can flip your image around like this. So it's upside down. Use a pencil of any kind. I have this one here, which most of my children have for their homework. So this is very handy. If you have a lead pencil like this one, this works too. Any pencil works as long as it has lead, okay? So I'm gonna take my pencil and lay it down on the side. And you're just gonna go right over your paper, okay, with that lead. If you notice, I'm using the side of my pencil, right, to do this, okay? And you wanna keep your lines very close together. Don't leave any spaces. If you do something like this, as you are filling the back, all this space here that's not covered with lead will show up missing when you transfer. So make sure you're very, very close together, okay? The darker your lead is, the darker your transfer will be. So once I've done something like this, I may even come back over it like this, even darker, and make sure I have it very well covered, okay? This is an option if you don't have transfer paper. Once you have filled this whole head in here with lead, turn it over, lay it on top of your head like this, make sure it lines up, tape it down, okay? or hold it in place, use your pencil that you just covered the back with lead, okay, with, and you're gonna follow your lines just like this. Follow them exactly how you want to see them once you've transferred, okay? So keep track of it. You're just gonna fill all these lines in, go all the way around your head like this. I even like to just give myself a guide for my nose as well, okay? And my, my eye, super important. Okay, so I'm not gonna take the time to do all of this, but you can pause this video, take a moment, trace all this, 
and then come back to me, okay? So right now, take the time to transfer your head, pause the video, come back when it's finished so we can start painting. Okay guys, so now that I've transferred my head and I'm ready to go, I'm going to grab a medium flat brush. You can use any medium brush that fills these bigger lines on your neck quickly. Any one will work. You just wanna make sure that it lays the paint down smoothly and doesn't clog it up, okay? So I'm gonna use this brush and get it wet in my water. Okay, just loosen up those bristles. Okay, now I have my plate here full of black, right? We've gotta use a lot of black and I'm gonna add water to it. I want this black to be nice and liquidy, almost like ink. Okay, so I just keep adding some water so it's, it goes over very smoothly. All right, here's the fun part. We get to start filling in all these black lines. So here we go. I'm gonna start from the bottom. And one tip, guys, a fun little tip for you that will help this process. I put a little dot on every line that I'm going to fill in black. See that? This is my guide. I know if it has a black dot, it's going, or a little dot from my pencil, it's gonna be a black line. This saves me time while I'm painting and confusion. So if I get lost on what line I'm on, I have those little dots as my guide. If you wanna take a minute to do that, pause the video and add those dots. Count out your black lines, okay? It'll save you a lot of frustration. Okay, so now that I'm ready, I'm just gonna start filling in these black lines. You, the, the wonderful thing about the zebra is these lines do not have to be perfect, okay? The imperfection is what makes a zebra so cool and gives it character. So as I'm doing these lines, I'm just kind of gonna let my brush land where it lands. And I'm not gonna worry too much about that because I want my zebra to have that character to him or her, okay? I'm not going to do my hair yet, okay? We're just filling in our stripes. Now, my zebra is slightly smaller than yours. Yours is going to be a little bit bigger. You have one more stripe right here on the very corner, and it will wrap around your canvas. So I want you to go ahead and reach around the side of your canvas and paint that black one in. All right. Now, this one here is also black, so I'm going to come around. Fill that in. You see I have my dot here as a guide to let me know that that is a black stripe. All right. The key is to have a lot of water in your black for this because you do have little spots in your canvas that are going to need that black to fill them and you'll notice as you go that it's kind of tricky to fill all those little spots with your paint if it's too thick. So make sure you add that water. Okay, and it just, it just takes a little bit of time, but as you get used to that stroke, it gets faster and faster. And if you notice, my lines are not perfect, right? and that's okay. I'm just kind of letting that brush land where it lands. There we go. And it's different every time I do it. But zebras are all different. So just enjoy the process and let it go. This one goes all the way up, meets the neck line there. Okay. I'm gonna do this line. I've marked it with a dot as well, so I can see where I'm at. I'm adding more water to my black as I go. My black's gonna seize up on me as I go. So I'm gonna continuously, or continually, continually, I guess, add water to that as I go. All right, already looking super cool. The zebra is so fun because 
it looks awesome no matter what you do. I love black and white images. Here we go. And if you notice, my neck isn't perfect either. I'm not going to have a perfect outline on my neck here. I kind of wanted my zebra to have the illusion of that fur and that imperfect form. Okay, so now we have the neck done, guys. Good work. Okay, so while I have my medium flat, I'm gonna go ahead and just fill in my nose here. I'm not going to do my head with this medium flat. I'm gonna switch brushes because they're smaller lines. But I am just going to get my nose in while I'm at it. Okay, so I'll go ahead and fill that in. I'll teach you how to brush up here in a minute and let that brush stroke fade into your stripes. Right now, I'm just going to give the basic outline of where my nose is so I can gauge my stripes for my head off of it. Now you should have outlined your nose and have a pretty good idea of where it is, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna fill it in. And again, this nose doesn't have a perfect shape. It's awesome, you can just kind of let that be. So there we go, we have our nose, and I'm going to rinse out my brush. So good work on the neck. I hope it was pretty simple for you to put that black in. Let's rinse our brush really well. Black likes to stay in our brushes. So we've got to clean it out really good. I'm gonna set that down. Okay, let's switch now. Let's see if I can find my brush here. There's two options for you, okay? Two options. We have a detail brush and we have a number six round brush, all right? The number six is gonna just give us thicker lines, the details thinner lines, all right? And it all depends on your brush pressure, how hard you're gonna push down as you're painting. If you tend to push pretty hard with your brush, I would suggest a detail brush for this part. I'm gonna use the number six round I tend to push a little bit lighter with my brush and I like the way this one moves for me. So I'm gonna use that one, but either one works. Let's loosen up the bristles and load up our brush with black. Okay, first things first, let's just fill in that eye. Okay, we have our eye here. We're gonna go ahead and shape it out with our black. Make sure it's thin and filled in. This eye and my nose act as a guide for me as I'm doing my stripes, so they're priority. I wanna make sure they're in first. Okay, in this area right here with your eye, you can add an eyelash or you can just kind of finish it off there on the corner. It's up to you what you prefer. I love to see the pretty eyelashes on these zebras. So go for it if you'd like. Okay, so I'm gonna start first by giving myself a line right here at the very top of my head. So all my lines meet almost like a part in the head, <laughs> your hair. Like if you were to have a part in your hair, you're gonna add it right here to your zebra. This is where our zebra's head parts, our hair parts, okay? And I'm going to base my lines off of it. So as I go here, I'm going to pull away from that center and meet my eye. And you see how my paint thins out right here? It's I, the, what we're shooting for is to have our paint reach all the way down without running out. So that usually means I don't have enough water in my brush. Okay. So if that's happening to you, feel free to get yourself more water in your paint. Okay. Now I'm gonna reach up here and come back down. And I'm letting my brush just land where it lands on this. Okay. So every stripe is slightly different, right? Oh, got a drip. And if you notice, I'm not 
going to um, I'm not going to paint my white stripes. I'm leaving those alone. It's just going to be my canvas. It's my canvas that's showing. But you can keep in mind that if by chance you get black where you don't want it to be, let it dry a minute and come back and add your white, okay? But you want to let it dry for a second. Okay, so I'm basing everything off this part here, right? I'm just still going right here with my ear. I'm going to go ahead and outline it with my brush. Your ear is a lot bigger than mine. I want you to just follow it all the way up to the point. The point of your ear, you're just going to outline it just like that. Okay, and this stroke comes down and ends right there. And your ears will be different every time you do them. They're just their own thing, which I love. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here to this one as well and outline. You notice I'm pushing kind of hard with my brush on this outline. I'm letting that line get thick. You can keep it thin if you'd like. That is a personal preference. It's not a perfect shape. We're just going to keep building off of this here. I outline the top of my head. There we go. Now I'm just going to keep building off my stripe here. Off that part, right? Still building off of it. Okay. Come right up here. Some of my lines are thicker. Some of them are really thin. The idea is to just keep building off that part. Awesome. Okay. We're gonna come back with an outline in a minute. You can kind of make that part a little bit thicker if you want to. All right, here we go. We're gonna start reaching down now towards our nose. Filling in the space if you have it. And add more water to your brush. I need to add more to mine. Because as I go, that paint seizes up on me. Okay. Have a little bit of a stroke that comes up there. All of you guys are going to have different stripes on this head because as you're painting, your brush is going to kind of tell you what it wants to do. And that's what makes it so awesome. Just let your brush go and let it land. Every zebra stripe will be a little bit different. Okay. And keep moving here. There's a wider one. And let it connect to that part. Getting more water on my brush. And this is why I love the dots in my stripes. Because you can see, I know exactly where to skip a line right there because I had my dot ready. So be sure to give yourself those guides. It will speed up the process for you. Make it a lot easier. Okay. I kind of change things as I go to every time. Okay, so we're gonna keep this one going here. That stripe connects. There's another one. And you notice it kind of goes in a um what do you call this? Just how it's going up and down. So you can imagine this is his forehead 
right here. So it goes up a little bit and then his nose, it comes up a little bit. So I don't have any lines that are straight, straight down. I wanna keep moving up and down as I go to give the illusion that his head is going up and down. You have that forehead. Okay. Okay, guys. Here we use another line here. Coming up and meeting. And this one I'm going to make a little bit thicker. All right, we'll come back and we will do some outlining here in a bit. But right now we're going to leave that alone. Good work. Okay, let's finish up the head over here. So I'm just gonna follow my little lines here. You can kind of press with your brush, make it thicker, a thicker line, or you can be light with your brush and it'll stay thinner, right? It's all about controlling the pressure of your brush on these lines. So if I press, press hard, well, I can't even talk. If I press harder, you're going to get that thicker line with your brush. Right? And give it a little bit of character. I feel I'm gonna give myself a thicker one right here. As we can see now, the side of the face a little more. All right. And this one breaks off on me. I gave myself that dot to remind me that this is a black line. This connects to my eye there. Okay, and as I come up, I'm gonna lighten my brush pressure, my brush pressure, I'm gonna lighten it there so it gets thinner up there at the top. Okay. All right, so we're gonna do some of these now. I just curve my brush around all the way around. Keep that moving. Remember, you don't need that perfect line. Okay, just let your brush wrap around and leave those imperfections. There's one. I'll do another one here. Wrap it around. And keep it going. I'm adding more water to my paint again. It likes to seize up on us as we go, right? And we don't want to spend the whole day doing these black lines. So if it's not landing on that canvas, do yourself a favor. Keep adding that water. Okay. Keep going down here. Almost there. Stripes look awesome. Okay, we're gonna do one more here. And I'm not too worried about what it looks like there next to my nose, because I'm gonna come back and add that fur in just a little bit. Let's just let that dry. Okay, I'll come over here and finish up the jawline. Let those black lines connect. Okay, awesome. Okay, I let myself know there's a black spot there. So those are gonna come right up and connect together. There we go. I actually had white in my original right here. But I covered it up and you can leave that or I'll show you how to put that white back in it bothers you. Okay, so here's another white dot. We're gonna come right up here. There we go. And this one comes all the way up to the top and kind of splits off. Just add some character to that stripe. 
The idea is to not have a pattern in our stripes. We want to keep them all unique. Okay. All right, I have another one here. Okay, I'm adding some more black. All right, this one doesn't start at the jawline. It's a little further away from it. I didn't start right at the line. You can though if you want. Looks good either way. Just to add some character, okay, this here kind of comes down and stops as well. All right, if you notice, we started on this side of the head first and worked our way this way. That gave our neck a minute to dry. So you have a place to um, relax your hand as you're doing these other lines. So that's kind of why I worked from this direction towards my neck after I painted my neck. Okay, so let's put this jawline in now. Just gonna shape it here at the top. Work my way around. All right. So this line comes up and it gets thicker as you reach the top. Just like that. Now you can just finish up your jawline if you want and bring it around. Okay, if you wanted to, you can finish it that way. And then go ahead and come down here and outline your neck as well. And let that be finished. All right. Okay guys, so the only thing is you wanna let this dry just a minute before you try and put this side of the head on. Because if you don't, you could smear it. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the ears and how they turned out. So I'm gonna leave those alone. The only thing you can do is just make sure this side is thicker, this side is thinner, and that landed where you want. Okay, all right, you guys, good work. That was awesome. Filling in those lines is a little tedious, right? That hopefully you added enough water to your brush that it went on pretty quickly. I'm gonna rinse my brush now and show you how to do that nose, okay? So I'm gonna use a larger flat brush now. If you have a medium flat, that works too, okay? But I'm gonna rinse it with some water, loosen up the bristles, okay? And then, just before I do my nose, I'm gonna use this brush first to give myself a little bit of shadow on my zebra. I want to put some white on my brush, just like that, and a touch of black, okay? I'm gonna kind of brush it back and forth on my palette until I get this gray. See that gray there? I don't want it black, I want it a very light gray, so I'm gonna keep brushing until I'm happy with that gray color. Super light, okay? All I wanna do is add some of this just gray to my white stripes underneath the neck. Anywhere that you feel there would be some shadow from the jaw and from not being on top where the light may be hitting your zebra, right? So I'm gonna just gently brush this in just below my neck, okay? You wanna keep it pretty light and let it fade out, okay? I'm gonna do it just on these couple stripes here. It's not super noticeable. It just adds a little bit of depth to your painting. So I'm just gonna do it right here under the jaw as well. It's gonna be very, you can even mix a little bit of gray if you want and just have it ready to do this. But the idea is to let it fade out, okay? Fade away. I'm gonna put it down here on the bottom as well. Just enough, okay? And then we're gonna put some right here wrapping around our nose wherever we feel. Oops, see I got a lot of black on that one. So I'm just gonna put white on my brush and thin that out, okay? This is just where I might feel there is a little bit of a shadow 
on my zebra. Put some there and some just along these stripes. Just kind of brushing that in very lightly. Okay. You can always add more white if you don't love it, if you want more white in there. All right, might put a little bit here. So basically you're just kind of gonna decide where you want that shading to be and let it be. Okay, so I showed you how I filled in um, some of my white here where I had a white stripe. So if I, ha if I ever do that and I wanna bring that stripe back, all you have to do is take your white brush or a small detail brush and load it up with some white and you can put it right in right there. Okay. So you're like, Miss Sarah, you lost your white stripe. It happens. Just put your stripe right back in there. Just like that. Okay. All right. So now that we have our shadow on our neck, I'm going to add just a little tiny bit of that gray shadow here. Okay to the edge of my ears, just like that. Just go up here and brush it in on each side of your ears. Remember, it doesn't need to be perfect. You're just given the illusion that there's a little bit of a shadow there. So it's slightly a shade darker than your white. I'm just doing the edges of my ear, okay? Keeping the center white. There we go. Just make sure that that center is white and if you went right over it and you don't have a white center anymore, put some white on your brush, paint over the top. No big deal. Okay, I like it. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush. And here we go. I'm gonna show you how to put that fur on our nose. This is gonna get you warmed up for the hair. So I'm gonna put some black on my medium brush here Okay, and come here to my nose, and you're just going to start where your nose outline is and flick away from it. All different heights as you go. Okay, see that? It's just like you're feather dusting your nose. Okay. And this can be really high, or you can keep it really close to your nose, but you're just flicking away and letting that brush land where it lands. See that? It's a really simple way to give the illusion that there's some fur there. All right, good work. Okay, let's rinse our brush again. We're gonna do the same thing that we just did on the nose in our ears. Okay, so I hope you got the feel for that because now we're gonna take some more black on that medium brush of ours, okay? And you're going to do the same thing. You're just gonna flick in any direction. I like to start in the middle. If you want, you can give yourself a line like that so you know where you're starting. And then you can flick away based on that, okay? But you want it random as you go up. See that? So it's not even the same. Just want it, to, want it to look like you have that hair peeking through, All right? Okay, so there's one ear. I'll do the same thing in this other one. You can kind of give yourself a line if you want to with your brush. So you have that guide, brush up and out away from that line. Go all the way as high as you want, okay? The goal is imperfection. That imperfection is what makes it look so awesome. All right, good job. So we have our ears done. I'm gonna rinse my brush really good. All right, make sure it's super clean. All righty. Now that our head is dry over here, I'm gonna go ahead and outline it. Okay, so it's all dry over here. So I'm gonna take my brush and just give it a nice outline all the way up. 
and back down. Just make sure it has a clean line to it. And you can see it's not a straight line. It's very much curved, which is great. Okay. All right, so at this point, I want you to let your zebra dry for a minute. I'm gonna show you how to do a really cool background. All right, this is kind of new for a lot of our artists. I don't know that anyone's really done this one before with me in particular, so just try it, have some fun. If not, if you don't wanna do it like me, get creative. This is kind of a fun technique. So the first thing I want you to do is lay your background colors out like this. You have green and I have, well, I have green and yellow. You should too, okay? And the idea is to blend these two colors together. Now remember, you have this hair coming up right here, okay? So if I were you, what I would do is kind of give myself an idea of where that hairline's gonna be coming up, right? I don't want my background to come into my white. So kind of give yourself those markings of where your hair's, hairline's gonna be there. So I'm not gonna go into that. But first we're gonna take some yellow on our brush like this, get a flat brush and load it up. Okay, and we're gonna put our yellow in here, right? I'm gonna show you this corner first. Then I'm gonna take my green, put the green up here. All right, in the corner. Now that I've brushed it in, I'm going to take a brush like this. It's a very loose, bristly brush, okay? Very loose. And I'm going to come over here and I'm gonna stamp it, okay? And the idea is to stamp these colors together. So they kind of blend. Oh wait, and you notice I started in yellow. The reason I started in yellow is because green just takes over very quickly, okay? So you want to start in the yellow and stamp on your way out just like that and let it fade okay if you want more green just bring it down in your yellow I promise green will take over okay so now that I've done that and you have an idea of how that works I am going to the rest of my zebra and I like to take my yellow and follow my zebra first you know because you normally you're gonna paint an outline right but because we're doing this fade, you're gonna to wanna to paint around your zebra. You have to do this kind of quickly. You don't want this paint to dry on you or the stamping will not work, okay? So you wanna go kind of fast. Follow your zebra all the way around. The nose, my nose cuts off here. Yours wraps around. So go ahead and follow it around with your nose or with your yellow, follow around your nose with your yellow. Get that yellow on there. Now I'm gonna get some green, okay? I'm gonna load the green up here at the bottom corner. Here we go. Taking my brush, I'm gonna start stamping it. Okay, so it fades into my green. Just like that, okay? And like I said, that green takes over quickly, right? So you gotta be kind of fast on this. Okay, just like that. All right, so now that we have that part done, I'm rinsing the green out of my brush for the top part because I don't want that green to fade too much into my yellow. I wanna keep some of my yellow showing. I'm gonna come around the top put that in there all right following my head very carefully I don't want to go into my zebra we worked pretty hard on that just leave that zebra alone right okay all the way up here all right so every time you do this you'll find that you can determine how much yellow or green you want in it. Okay, I want a lot more yellow than green, so I'm only adding a little bit of my green up here to the top to stamp in. Okay. Then we're gonna stamp that. Just make sure you stamp that yellow in first so you like it. And then let's fade into our green. 
all the way out to the top. Okay. Now as you stamp up here, you can go to the edge and go ahead and stamp the edges as well. Now keep in mind, if you don't have a way to stamp this on, if you don't have a brush to do this kind of technique, you can always just blend it in with the flat brush that I had before, right? So if you feel like you want to just blend it in, you can do that with a flat brush. Now I kind of have this line showing up here, that's okay because my hair is coming up there, but I'm gonna go ahead and let some more yellow fade in, just slightly, so my hair fades out into my background. All right, cool. So there's your background. Kind of a fun way. So I have this brush now, and it still has some green and yellow in it, so typically I would just go ahead and stamp the sides and the top and have that done as well. I don't stamp this area, my zebra wraps, but if you want to, you can, and that finishes off your edges. So I'm gonna set that brush aside. Good work, you guys. I hope that was fun and relaxing. It's kind of a enjoyable way to fill your background in really quick and blend two colors together, but it does take a little bit of practice. So if you don't love the way it turned out, just let it dry a second and you can paint right back over it with your acrylics with the color you want more of. So if you feel like my background got taken over with green, just let it dry a second and go back over it with yellow. It'll cover it up. That's one of the beauties of acrylics. Beautiful thing. Okay, now that that is finished, we are going to just do a little bit of work in our nose while our background dries a second. I don't wanna do my hair just yet. I wanna let this corner dry a minute. So I'm gonna come right over here to my nose and put some black on a large flat brush or a medium brush and a little bit of white, okay? Just like that. And I'm going to give the illusion that my pony is smiling. Or that, you know, this little zebra is smiling at me. I just wanted a way to do that. So I gave that little illusion. And you can brush in a little bit of that white over the top of the nose to make it look like there's some light reflecting on the top. So it's not a hard black up there. Okay. Now you can make this smile as dark as you want. It just depends on how much white you decide to put on your brush. And brush it in, just like that. All right. Oh, I got some black on my background. Don't wanna do that. I gotta take care of that pretty quick. Okay, so once you have that little highlight in, I'm gonna wipe off that. Oh boy. Struggle here. Struggle's real. That was a good chunk of black. All right. So once I've got that done, I'm going to put my little nose in. And the nose just looks like a little teardrop. I'm going to take that white on my brush and spin it around. So I have that little teardrop. Teardrop nose. See that? You make it look like you're going to do an oval, but... You're not, just like that. And there's that little nose. Okay, I'm going to rinse out my brush and let's do our eye. All right, so I'm gonna switch brushes now. I'm now gonna switch to a detail brush, a smaller brush to do the inside of my eye. Okay, so here's my detail. Let's put some white on that little brush. We're gonna come right up here and just give our eye a smile, just like that. All right, now once you give your eye a smile, you can flip your brush around and use the back to give it a chocolate chip. And now we're just gonna give it that little sparkle on the eye, right? All right, so now that we have that sparkle, your background should be good to go, should be dry. So we can do the hair, and the hair is so fun. I love doing the hair. I hope you have some fun doing this with me. So you're gonna wanna grab a large flat or a medium flat, and we're gonna do something similar to what we did in the nose with our flicking, but we're doing it with the hair, okay? So we have this little 
guide here, each of my black flicks for my hair starts at a black stripe. And I like to go in a triangle motion. So I'm going out, okay, up and out as I go. So let's load our brush up with some black. And remember, as we go, this does not need to be perfect. That's what makes this hair so fun. You're just flicking up in this triangle shape and you're letting your brush land wherever it lands, okay? Some of these flicks are going to be higher and some are gonna land shorter and that's just awesome. It gives it a lot more character that way. Okay, and this one here, same thing. You can have some coming out like that and then the rest of it going up and out. Okay. But the idea too is the black connects with each other so you can really see that white stripe showing up, right? Okay, so it just, it connects with each other and you can really see it. All right, so we're gonna keep going. There we go. And flick up. Just let that hair land where it lands. Okay, some of these are smaller stripes, so we're gonna be a little bit more careful. Okay, on this one, same thing. Just going right up. I'm gonna let some of these, as I get closer to my hair, be a little taller to give it that character of its own and help it get the dimension so it's like the head or hair is getting taller as it nears the ears, right? Okay. Now this one, because it's right at the jawline, I just made it really big. Just a big old chunk there. Okay. There we go. Super cool. All right. And here we are. This one comes right up. It's pretty small, right? And you notice I'm flicking with the tippy toe of my brush, huh? I am using the toe of my brush to do this because I wanna have a little more control. My, my hair is gonna flick right off my canvas. Yours won't. Yours wraps right around, okay? It's just because mine is slightly smaller than yours. Now I'm gonna come back, I'm flattening my brush to give it a thinner flick here on the hair. Coming back down over my black. Okay, just cleaning up the top of my hair. Okay, and my ear here, I left a little bit of white, but it has some flicking around my ear as well. Now the front right here of the hair is kind of fun because you can make it really short like this and just give your pony that character right there, shorter hair. I've seen a lot done like that. Or you can just bring it right off the canvas or you decide how high or short you want it to be. But let's just flick some hair right there in the middle. All right, guys, good work. So on some of these, I'm gonna come back and just add these little twigs of hair right just for that character in my in my hair going up see that you can just kind of add it in there okay let's let that dry just a minute and you are about finished good work beautifully done all right let's let that pony sit that zebra call it a pony but it's a zebra let's let it sit just a minute I'm going to take a medium flat brush and while my black hair is drying, I'm gonna put some of that gray shadow that we put in um, underneath the neck and the jawline. I'm gonna put a little bit just on, at the base of where the hair comes up at the neck, okay? So I'm just gonna make this gray here, very light gray, and you're gonna come right along the base of the neck here and flick up lightly. This gives the illusion that that neckline is there without it just taking over, okay? So I'm gonna come up here right to the base of my neck and brush up and let it just kind of land where it lands. You should have that outline already still showing. Okay, come all the way up and do it. 
Okay, and that's going to show off that neckline without doing a harsh line. Okay, all right, good work. Okay, final little detail, guys. Your final touches. We're going to use a small detail brush. Looks like this, right? Okay, I'm making sure it's clean. I put lots of water on it. And I'm gonna load it up with some white here. Just like that, just loading that baby up. Okay, and you're gonna give yourself some highlights in your hair. Super fun, super random. I'm just gonna brush up into the hair, okay, anywhere you like. Just wanna give yourself those little highlights as you go. I'm just gonna brush those up without taking away from my black, but I'm letting it, I'm letting this line land where it wants to land, okay? They are not perfectly aligned. There's no pattern to it. Maybe I'm just letting my brush go, I'm putting those highlights in. And it helps show off the tip of your hair as well. Okay, so keep reaching up. I'm gonna come right in here to my top of my hair too and put a couple in there. Some are longer and some are shorter. Okay, looking good. You can go back and add white anywhere you like. If you feel like you want a little more or a little less, I'm gonna rinse my brush now. Rinse it and I'm gonna give myself an eyelash right over here on the other side. This is my final touch. My background should be done, right? So I'm gonna come right here to the edge. Try and line it up. You wanna try and line it up right here with this lash. So you have one coming up here. I'm gonna try and line it up here, okay? And give yourself a smiley face lash. Kind of curl it up, just like that. So now you have that eyelash showing up. All right, you guys, good work. Thank you for painting the zebra with me today. I hope you had lots of fun. I'm gonna sign my work because I'm super proud of it. That was a challenge. I hope you guys will hang this one up. Be sure to tag me and show me your pictures. I was so excited to paint with this with you in our studio. So be sure to show me your work so I can just be so proud of all of you together. So I'm gonna sign this right there and call it done. Thank you guys. Hope to see you really soon. Bye.